Hey DIY guitarist, today we've got a big one for you. The beauty of a Stratocaster is that it can be almost anything that you want it to be. Because all of the electronics are uh, bolted to the scratch plate here, the pick guard, means that we can swap out pickups to get almost any combination of pickups that we like. Uh, you can mix and match, you can have single coils, you can have vintage, you can have hot, you can have humbuckers, you can, uh, depending on the routing underneath here, you can have P90s, you can have all sorts of things. Uh, but even better is you can take a pick guard and populate that with whatever pickups you want and then still have the original pick guard with those pickups and you can do as many of those as you want. So you can take your regular pickups and swap them out for single coil humbuckers, HSS. Or you can go all out and build a pit guard with HSH. Whatever it is that you want it to do, and you can have different kinds of wiring, you can push pull pots, everything that you want to do, and then just replace the pit guard, and it's like you have a whole new guitar. So, what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I wired up this pit guard as well as this pit guard, walk you through step by step everything that I did and we'll probably make it into two parts. So the first part will be all of the uh, core electronics, that's the switch and the knobs and the input and output and all those sorts of things and that'll be the first video. And the second video will be in, uh, applying the pickups, uh, installing the pickups on there. And the reason I'm doing the uh, HS8, I'm sorry, the HSS, is so that you see how you can wire up single coil pickups, and you have a humbucker pickup in there, so you can see how both of those work. The first part of it will be taking the pick guard, putting everything into it, wiring up the basics part of it. Second part will do the pickups themselves, uh, so that you can see how that works and it keeps the file sizes down a bit and makes it easier for everyone. Uh, so let's get started. Things I use. An old pit guard. This isn't the final pit guard I used. It was just handy and that's all you need. Uh, I'm going to use a parts kit from All Parts here. The parts kit comes with everything you need to wire up a traditional Stratocaster. I'm not always a fan of all parts, but this kit does have quality components, I must admit. Uh, you can see how it works here. You have four lugs across the bottom. First lug here is power, and then the other three lugs correspond to the pickups and the controls for each pickup. So here we have the neck pickup selected, and then when I move the lever, you can see now two lugs are connected here. So we have the neck and middle pickups, and then I move the tip again, and now only the middle pickup is selected. Next is the middle and bridge. And finally we have the bridge pickup alone. The switch is actually two-sided, so one side controls the pickups and the other side selects the controls. Next, the kit comes with three CTS 250K pots. These are high quality American-made pots, same as I would buy if I was uh, sourcing parts individually for the highest quality. The kit comes with two capacitors, even though you only need one. These are high quality Sprague orange drop capacitors, however, they are 0.047 microfarad, and I prefer the 0.022. The difference is the amount of tone attenuation you get. A, four, a 47 has more range, but it's harder to dial in the sweet spot and the extra range isn't all that useful to me. But these are really good parts. Next up is a quality Switchcraft jack. These are a nice improvement over many import jacks and jacks on budget guitars. My guitar though already has an ice jack already, so I'll use the existing jack and just put this into inventory. We also get some nice cloth coated wire in almost exactly the lengths you need with a little spare, in case you make a mistake. Cloth wire isn't the best, but it's traditional, so most high-end builders will use it on strats. Now the pickups I'm using are uh, hot Texas Blues pickups from the Stratosphere. Uh, as soon as they came out, I had to try them. And they're really good pickups for like 35 bucks. 
They don't sound exactly like Texas Specials or even Tex-Mex pickups, but they are good pickups. I don't get anything from anybody, so I have to pay for everything the same as you guys, so maybe I shouldn't recommend things, but I've been happy with these pickups for the last five months or so, and I'll do a sound comparison maybe in another video. But I am going to switch out the bridge pickup for an old DiMarzio that I had sitting around. I didn't like the pickup 15 years ago, but I'm going to wire it up differently this time. I'm going to go through the tone knob, and we'll see if that helps. I already don't like the color of the white Stratosphere pickups. I'll fix that before installing them uh, into the guitar at the end. I prefer the cream color. It looks more realistic. Before we wire anything up, let's mount all the hardware to the pick guard so everything is right where we need it. I'll mount the volume pot first. These pots have a locking tab, which must be removed. Some circuit boards or other uses will have a slot for that tab to fit into to keep the uh, pot from rotating. Guitars don't have that slot. So we'll just break the tab off. You can use uh, pliers or wire cutters or something and it'll come right off. If you don't remove that, your control will be crooked inside the guitar. To keep the control from rotating in a guitar, we use a lock washer. Then comes the plain washer and the nut. Hand thread these to avoid cross threading. You can see how much this control sticks up. Uh, spacer will move it down lower in the pick guard so the knot won't stick up so much. I'm using a wrench to snug these down. I don't have to torque them down like bolts on a long haul truck. I just want them snug so that they don't try to move when I'm soldering. Maybe we'll speed this up since we've already seen one install. Traditionally, the controls are mounted with the volume lugs facing down, the middle control lugs facing down, and then the bottom control facing upwards toward the middle control. These two controls will face each other because they will connect together when we make them into tone knobs. I'm gently bending the lugs on these pots back to give more room between them. If the switch you are using has a spring, install the spring on the outside away from the controls. The switch is reversible, but you don't want the spring in the way of your wires. The screws provided with this switch are shorter than usual, but they work just fine. The Stratosphere neglected to ship the screws and springs with their hot Texas Blues pickups, so I had to scrounge some up from inventory. The DiMarzio here has its original screws and springs. I found some modern screws with tornado style springs. And finally we have some old school screws with surgical tubing as springs. The genius of this type of spring is that you can cut whatever size of spring you need. The downside is the surgical tubing will harden and crumble after some amount of years, depending on your climate. The upside to the screw dilemma is that you can see different ways of mounting pickups all in one job. 
I do want to check that my surplus screws will fit into the pickups before I try to mount them. Surprise! As an added bonus, these Stratosphere pickups are wax potted to reduce microphonic squeal. I know they are wax potted by the wax plug that gets pushed out by the screws. When they dip the pickups in wax, some wax gets into the screw holes and sticks. Installing the screws drives it out. This is an unexpected feature for such affordable pickups. Now that the screws are piloted in the holes, I'll remove them for installation into the pickguard. Installation is simple. The pickup goes into the hole and the screw goes through the top. The tubing acts as a springy spacer. As an added benefit, the tubing will hold the screw in place while you line up the pickup. The extra dogleg section of the pickup always points toward the back of the guitar or the bridge. Guitars routed SSS or single 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 will have the space on only one side to accommodate this dogleg section. Simply line up the screw and the holes and drive it in. Same on the other side. You can see here how the tubing gets squished a bit, but it's still springy. A more modern take is using a screw and spring combination like this. These springs have a tornado shape to them so that they can collapse into themselves instead of becoming a solid column. Very clever. Unfortunately, they won't hold the screws in place like the tubing. The wide part of the tornado goes up at the top near the pick guard. The narrow part goes against the pickup. I'm using my thumbnail to retract the spring a little bit to make it easier to guide into the hole in the pickup. The Demarzio came with older style springs. You can see when they collapse they form a solid column instead of collapsing into themselves like modern springs. Slide on the spring, line up the pickup, and start screwing it together until it bites. Same for the other side. Pickup height won't matter at this point, it'll be set later, you just need the pickup poking through. I'm going to start wiring at the bottom and work my way up from the outside in towards the center. So bottom control first, then middle control and top, and I'll leave the pickups for last. You should have your controls laid out something like this. I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up the controls. First, I'm going to add the capacitor. I prefer a 0.022 microfarad capacitor, and it connects like this. This type of capacitor doesn't have polarity, so you don't have to worry about which leg connects where. For this setup, one leg goes through these two lugs and gets soldered in place. The other leg will be soldered to the back of the control, but we'll do that in a later step. Solder here and here. Be careful that the leg doesn't touch the body of the control. Next we will assign the controls to the pickups. These are the pickups that go with each lug. Traditionally the bottom control would go to the middle pickup like this. The bridge lug would be left empty. But I'm going to assign the bottom tone to the bridge pickup like this. Solder here and here. 
I'm measuring out just enough wire to reach from the control along the pit guard out of the way to the lug on the switch. The kit comes with cloth pushback wire. And then feed the wire into the lugs. and solder both connections. Now I'm assigning the middle control to the neck pickup like this. But I also wanted to control the middle pickup, so I'm going to add a jumper to connect the neck and middle lugs together like this. Solder here, here, and here. Measure out just enough wire to go from the control along the pit guard to the switch. Cut to length. I'm pushing back to reveal an extra amount of wire here, which I will use for the jumper. Feed the short end into the control. the long end through the lug on the switch. Then I will bend the extra wire across to the neck lug and solder everything into place. It's time to ground the controls to control buzzing, static buildup, and any other problems that come up. Really all it takes is running a wire across all three controls. I'll start at the bottom and connect it to the middle control, but in order to only heat up the control one time, I want to gang all the connections together. That is the ground wire to the bottom control, plus the ground wire to the volume control, plus that last leg from the tone capacitor. And solder everything into place. I will run wire to the volume pot, but I'm not going to solder it in just yet. I want to only heat up the controls as few times as possible, and I want to gang some more connections together on the volume control in the next step. First, I'll measure enough wire to connect the tone controls. Cut to length, push back the ends, place the wire, and solder the connection to the bottom control. Measure the next wire to the volume control, cut to size and push back the ends, and prepare to solder in place. You might have to get creative to get all three wires to hold together while you solder them. In this case, I just needed some weight to hold them down. A pair of pliers will do nicely. I want to make sure I get a nice hot solder joint here, so I'll reflow the solder to make sure that all the connections are solid. Give it a little tug and it holds. Good connection. Before we ground the volume control, we need to ground the last lug. The easy and traditional way to do this is to bend the lug up toward the body of the control. We will gang a few wires together here so that we only heat the control up once. We have uh, the bus ground from the tone controls, but we also need to add some wires to ground other parts of the guitar. We need a wire going to the jack. We also need a wire going to the spring claw on the back of the guitar. And if the guitar is shielded, we need a wire going to the body of the guitar. This is only if the guitar is shielded. Uh, all the wires plus the bent lug are then soldered together here. Bend the outside lug up against the body of the control. I'm going to take two long lengths of wire for the jack and the spring claw and twist their ends together to make them easier to solder to the control. It 
takes a little effort to get all the wires lined up with the bent lug and ready for soldering. And then I'll spread some solder across the whole ground connection and make sure I get a nice, clean, hot solder joint. This is a good time to clean up the excess wire from the capacitor as well. Skipping the center lug for the moment, we can now connect the switch to the circuit. I'll use a short wire to connect the volume control to the first lug on the switch. We also need to add a jumper to connect to the other side of the switch and solder everything into place. The remaining lugs will be where the pickups connect. I'll add the jumper first. Then the connection to the volume control. And solder everything in place. Now I'll add the hot wire. Attach a wire that is the same length as the wire for the jack to the center lug of the volume control. This wire is usually white, but it can be any color that is different from the ground wire, because you'll need to be able to tell the two wires apart later after the pit guard is installed. And solder in place. Insert the wire into the center lug and solder. Okay, well that's the end of part one, and so we have all the basics laid out here with the controls and the input and output and all that. Uh, so stay tuned for part two, and we'll go ahead and install pickups.